sustainable energy. We often hear in the public debate, we hear clean coal versus renewables, and which is the, the best option. And in fact, very often, the best options come by combining the two. One of the most cost effective ways for bringing uh, the price down for renewable energy is to combine it through hybrids with conventional sources. And we're approaching a transition phase whereby very often we can make use of existing, um, existing power stations or, or existing technology and make a transition by combining them with uh, renewables cost effectively. Of course, this is not the only solution. And tonight you'll hear also the important role that, uh, of nuclear and other energy resources. And that will be the challenges and the questions that we'll be discussing. Look forward to you joining us. I'm Kim Talos from uh, University College London School of Energy and Resources uh, down in Adelaide. And originally I come from Finland, which today is experiencing a revival of uh, nuclear power generation. To talk about a revival at a global level, and that's my angle, that's where I'm coming from, is more an ideological question than uh, actual investment trends. There surely are investments coming, but not perhaps enough to talk about a massive revival. It's more of an ideological revival. States, people are accepting, again, the possibility of having nuclear-based generation, which in the future may or may not, my opinion it probably will, have an impact on the investment decisions. But if we look at, for example, countries like Germany, Sweden, they are going back to their decisions and prolonging the lifetime of their generation capacity based on nuclear. Now, in Australia, I came here about 80 months ago. The striking feature of the Australian nuclear debate is the absence of a debate. Nuclear-based generation is approached like a religion type of phenomena. There's no discussion. There's a lot of people who are against it vocally. There is another group, minority, that are very much in favor of nuclear, again, quite vocally considered in the size of the group. But a objective and sensible discussion seems to be missing. And for me, that's the most striking feature of the Australian nuclear situation, the absence of it, the absence of the debate. And for that purpose, this evening is obviously a very good starting point and example for others. Other features that I found interesting in the Australian context is, again, the absence of a regulatory framework for licensing, operating, decommissioning, to operating a power plant based on nuclear generation. If one day Australia situations change and Australia wants to go towards a nuclear future, that is not possible with the current regulatory framework. And that is something politically possibly very difficult, but something the government should, in my opinion, do. The second and the last item is education. There is no nuclear programs, to my understanding, in Australia. And if one day we want to go towards a nuclear future, we should have people who understand and are experts in this particular area. Nuclear energy, fission energy, is one of the power sources of the future. A lot of people think about it as something that's come and gone, it's had its day. But in fact, I would argue that nuclear energy was a technology that arrived too soon and the world wasn't ready for it. But now, with the converging problems of climate change and energy security, the need to move away from fossil fuels to a low carbon energy mix for the future, nuclear power is about to have its day. It's the only fit for service base load, low carbon electricity technology that has been proven to displace fossil fuels, to avoid burning coal on a large scale, to provide abundant, concentrated energy for a modern society. I'll also argue that nuclear energy 
is not only able to scale up to the point where it can totally replace fossil fuels, but that it can do so economically, and that in fact its fuel supply, uranium or thorium, is for all intents and purposes inexhaustible. We have millions of years of supply of it. So there we have it, an answer to our energy crisis if we have the will and the understanding to pursue it to its maximum potential. It's also a very controversial energy source because historically it's been strongly related to nuclear weapons. So can you disentangle these two? Is it cost effective? How do you bring it to a country like Australia that has, nuclear en that has no history of nuclear energy? These are the sort of questions I look forward to dealing with in episode four of Thinking Critically About Sustainable Energy.